Welcome to the Time Capsule Show, where we explore life in the 21st century through the eyes of people just like you and me. I'm Monica. And I'm John Ruse. And today we have Dean and Basketball Coach of St. John's Preparatory School, Mr. John Kiggins. John, thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you for having me. Greatly appreciate it. Greatly appreciate it. So, um, can you tell us a little more about what you do? What inspired you to choose your profession? Yeah, so college, uh, world of sales and business. Um, and along the way, was coaching uh, AAU basketball for little kids. Uh, kids between, it was third grade team and a fifth grade team we had. And one of the teams that we played, uh, the coach was a, was a friend of mine. And he had said, oh, you know, I'm not sure if you would ever be interested in coaching high school. I said, I actually would be interested in coaching high school. I think it'd be something I like to dabble in. And he said, a, a buddy of mine, a former player of mine, is actually coaching at St. John's Prep. Uh, and he might be looking for a coach. So he put me in touch with, uh, at the time, Coach Camus. Uh, and, you know, had the interview at the school and was brought on as assistant coach. Uh, and, you know, then um, he, he left and then left the school the following year. And I was the head coach. Uh, and then, uh, you know, found my way into the school uh, being full-time uh, as Dean of Students there the following year. So this is now my second year of being a Dean of Students, uh, and I couldn't have loved it anymore. And, and, and it's definitely something I'm extremely passionate about and something that I plan to do for a very, very, very long time, for sure. So, yeah, that sounds so exciting, being a Dean of Students. And honestly, when we saw you fill out the form and I saw that you were Dean of Students, I assumed that you'd be – much older because when I was there our deans were like pretty old so I gotta say it's pretty cool having a dean that's close to high school students ages like do you feel that you can that you get them more like you understand them more than an older dean would yeah I mean I, I think I think uh you know I have I have a brother who's a sophomore in college now um you know so kind of being around him a lot obviously and, and kind of knowing his friends and being around his friends a lot you know, it kind of helps me understand um, a lot of the problems that they're going through, um, a lot of the struggles that they're going through or the challenges. It also helps, you know, in terms of just, you know, even the smallest things such as like slang, you know what I mean? Knowing, understanding what the kids are talking about in slang, whether it's, you know, the, the TikTok challenge, whatever the case is, you know, just being able to connect uh, on a different level, I think helps, um, you know, because ultimately then at the end of the day, you know, you're able to kind of see, okay, I understand the, the place at which this kid's coming from, um, you know, whether it be, you know, upset or happy. And, and I can kind of try to put myself in their shoes while still giving them advice or still uh, reprimanding them in a certain way, you know, just to make sure that, you know, they get the most out of the conversation uh, and they understand where I'm coming from. So, you know, I think, I think it definitely helps, um, you know, and, and I, I, I found it actually very helpful that, you know, just having my brother in that age range that I've been able to kind of also, you know, tap into, into him and see, you know, is this something that you were going through it in two years ago when you were in high school and things like that. So it def definitely, in my opinion, I think, I think it's great, not only for myself, but for the kids. So you said you were in business before, what business were you in? So I was in uh, sales. So uh, when I tried to describe my old job to people, uh, especially the kids, they say, oh my God, you were the office. No, not quite the office. So I was selling print and print related materials. Uh, so packaging, uh, direct mail campaigns, labels, uh, forms, things like that. But everyone assumes, oh, it's like the office. Well, they sold paper. So people from the office would sell paper to us and we in turn would print on that paper. Um, you know, so that I did that coming out of college for about two and a half, three years um, for a company called R. O. Donnelly. Uh, they're the largest global print conglomerate in the world. Uh, so I worked in New York City. I dealt with clients all over the country and some all over the world. Uh, you know, so to me, uh, one of the most important things that I always say to the kids and to, to other people's communication is key. Uh, it's the key to life in any situation that you find yourself in. Um, so being able to kind of be in the world of business and immerse myself in conversations with people from different backgrounds, people from different areas, people from different countries, even 
it kind of you're able to kind of you know learn all aspects of the communication and learn how to effectively communicate with with people so to me that was uh definitely a key and something that helps me till this day um in regards to the kids and even with coworkers and faculty members as well so what drew you to go towards a shift towards education and working with kids and high school teens specifically? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, back in college, I worked for the college basketball team at Iona. So basketball was definitely a passion of mine. Um, and so this day I still do a lot of stuff with the college in terms of basketball. Um, but getting out of college, I started working with, you know, the third and fifth grade teams. And then as we were going up and I found it really fulfilling because I think that kids just want to learn um especially at that age they really wanted to learn the game or they really wanted to learn and just kind of like have somebody to look up to I guess you could say and 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 be there uh and I found it extremely fulfilling and then once the opportunity to um translate that to a high school level you know I kind of look back at my high school coaches who had an impact on me or my high school teachers or my high school counselors who had an impact on me and I would try to say okay you know they had this impact on me this way how can I possibly provide an impact to a kid in another way, right? Because I'm sure that you guys have had people in your high school career uh, that impacted you in one way or another, that have helped you through hard times, that have helped you through different situations. And to me, that's the most fulfilling thing is being able to help a person um, through a situation that they don't have the answers to or they're too afraid to ask somebody else that they're close to. Uh, that they're just looking for, you know, an unbiased opinion. Um, and once I was able to do that with the basketball team as, as an assistant coach and the opportunity presented itself to do this full time, I immediately jumped on it. I said, I said, yes, I think before Mr. Higgins even finished the sentence, I said, absolutely. I said, I don't even know what you're going to say, but yes. So, you know, it was just one of those things where, you know, if you can achieve that and if you can provide, um, you know, an opportunity for, somebody to confide in you or for somebody to just feel better about a conversation or feel better about a situation. That to me is the most redeeming quality that you could do. And there's no amount of money in the world that could uh, take the place of that. Um, And so I think it's really important that we have more people who are willing to step up and, and, and and provide themselves and and to put themselves in a situation where they can help uh, the kids of today. Cause I think now more than ever kids, in high school, kids in elementary school need that type of guidance and need that that type of mentorship, I guess you could say. So were you always interested in basketball? Have you played like hockey or soccer, or baseball in high school? Yeah, yeah. So so it's funny because uh, Monica, you can ask your brother. Um, you know, I'd be down in Astoria Park over the summer, and he was be he'd be playing football with his friends. I'm like, all right, I'm jumping in the game. I don't care what anybody says. You know just to go out there, you know, I like to consider myself a multi-sport athlete. Uh, And I was as a kid, I I grew up, I played soccer. um, I played lacrosse, I played baseball. Uh, I did play hockey for a little bit, basketball, obviously. I played golf in the summer. So I definitely jumped in to a lot of sports. But to me, my grandfather uh, was an assistant coach for the girls basketball team at my high school. And back when I was in first grade through fifth grade, you know, he would bring me to the practices and he would have me be the water boy. So I was at all the practices. I would go to all the games and, you know, I was able to kind of still be around it as much as possible and everything like that. And then on top of that, my mother actually played division one college basketball uh, at Fairfield university. And now my brother currently plays division one college basketball at Bryant university. So basketball is something that ran in the family. Um, And it was definitely something that I, enjoyed as well and something that I may not have been the best player on the team um, but I definitely was a good teammate and and, and just trying to make sure that that, that, you know the team won so uh, to me you know it was always a passion of mine to still be a part of basketball in any way shape or form. Got it so it seems like sports have always had a huge impact on your life and it influenced you to be in the position that you are in today. But let's say you chose a different path. Let's say you never entered business. You never entered education. What would you be doing and why would you be doing it? That's a good question. You know, so growing up, uh, my favorite TV show was 24. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with 24, but it's Jack Bauer, 
uh, he's like a counter terrorist agent and he works on, on stopping uh, terrorist attack, uh, a terrorist attack in 24 hours, hence the name of the show 24. So growing up, I would watch that. I said, I want to be in the FBI because of Jack Bauer. Like I want to go and stop everything. And I, I, I think that I would be just like him beating all the bad guys. Then once I realized that I probably couldn't do that because it was a TV show, I said, okay, let me switch gears to something else. Um, and that's when I decided that I, I wanted to be, you know, in the world of business. Yeah. Do you think that uh, your love of sports influenced business? Yeah, no, I, I mean, so sports, I think, plays an intricate part in everybody's life, whether you're good or whether you're bad, right? Because uh, it teaches you kind of life, life lessons along the way, such as teamwork, communication, uh, time management. You know, it teaches you a lot of those things that you don't think are applicable or you don't think could have an impact on anything else. But in actuality, it has an impact for sure. Um, you know, I think that in the world of business, you need to you need to have a lot of things. I mean, at least for when I was, it was in sales. It's very goal oriented. It's very goal driven. Um, with that being said, you have to hit quotas. So sort of like in basketball or, or any sport, you're trying to achieve a goal. You know, we're trying to achieve a goal. And how do I do this? I'm trying to be the best you know, salesperson that I could be. How, how can I achieve this, this goal, right? Um, you know, you, you learn teamwork. I have four different guys who are on the same team and our team needs to hit this number, right? So person one may not be, may not be having a good month while person two is having a great month. So I'm cheering you on while you pick up the slack for me, right? It teaches you time management. It teaches you, you know, planning ahead. It teaches you all these different things that you could take away from it. And, and, you know, at least in the world of business, it's a perfect translation because you're able to kind of apply a lot of those things that you learn in sports into the world of business. So it definitely, definitely had uh, an impact on, and a positive impact at that on, on when I went into uh, the business world. Yeah, that, that's so true. So me and Monica in high school, we dabbled more into like the performing arts stuff. And I don't okay. like I personally don't think that there was that same camaraderie, that same like togetherness in performing arts. I felt like there was more competition because people only there's only one role, you know, so pe there, were more, there was yeah. more competition. People want the spotlight only for themselves. So I've always been like regretful that I didn't do men's volleyball because I always loved volleyball. And they started that my senior year in high school there mm -hmm. at St. John's. So I didn't get the chance to try sports out in high school. But you're right. When it comes to sports, there's that teamwork, there's that communication, and that definitely mm -hmm. translates into other aspects of life, whether it's business or any other career out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Like you said, I mean, it, it, as you know, in performing arts, uh, when you're going out for, uh, let's say, The Little Mermaid, five people can't be Ariel. You know, there's only one Ariel. So you're competing against all these other people in order to be, you know, that person. So you know, there definitely is, is a little bit of a difference in terms of a competition scope, um, you know, but at the end of the day, you can kind of still say, well, if so-and-so is Ariel and I'm not, I'm not going to tank this play just so everyone will say, wow, she was so bad as Ariel and look at this, right? You still have that, okay, you know, we're still in the same production. We're still trying to achieve the, the same goal of everybody giving us a standing ovation at the end of the show, you know? Right, exactly. So, um, John, we're now in the segment of the show we like to call past, present, and future, where we explore three different periods of your life. So how do you see okay. yourself now compared to five years ago? Now compared to five years ago? Um, that's a good question. I think that I am much more of a, uh, I'd say, understanding person, much more of a patient person, I guess you could say. Uh, in the role that I'm in, you got you have to kind of be empathetic and understanding and under, you know, kind of put yourself in, in the shoes of where somebody's coming from and try to understand because while I may think at my age that it may not be a smart decision or something that was said may not be the smartest thing at that age, you know, somebody may just not know the difference or may not know. Right. And then I try to say, okay, in high school was, was I maybe in the same boat? Was I not? Uh, so definitely understanding and patience is something that I think that I've kind of grown into in these past five years, for sure. And how do you see yourself in the next five years? The next five years, I hope to continue to, to grow my patience and understanding. 
Um, <laughs> no, but in the next five years, you know, hopefully just, just kind of, you know, continuing to be the best version of myself and being able to help all the kids in different situations. Um, you know, it definitely, this definitely is a passion of mine. Um, you know, I, and I just continue and hope that, you know, what I'm doing and, and how it's being viewed, I guess you could say, uh, is helping a kid in some way, shape or form. That way, you know, when they go into their five years, you know, they can look back and take the advice or, or take the certain situation and kind of say, okay, I understand where they were coming from and maybe pass it, uh, you know, pay it forward as everyone likes to say to the next person. So I, I got a pretty serious question for you. Do you, okay. ever, do you ever see yourself in your students? Like, do you ever see like the high school version of yourself in some of the students that you are probably close with? I do. I definitely do. I definitely look and say, man, I could be mad at that situation, but then say, who are you kidding? You did, you did that yourself, you know? So you definitely could, could see maybe a kid who's, who's turning in an assignment late or a kid who's, you know, taking his time and strolling to class instead of getting there, you know, right away, you know? So, you know, while, while obviously you could be upset and mad about it, you, you kind of say, you know, I see it. I see what I, what's happening here. I've done this before. You know, it's not the end of the world, but at the same time, still making sure that we're not practicing bad habits, right? And we're not doing it and trying to, you know, I, the one thing that I always love to do is kind of put myself and put the kids in my shoes where I say, okay, if you were at my job, right? If you were working in a real life profession, what do you think would happen if you decided to show up late, if you decided to, to come with your hat, with your shirt half tucked out, if you decided to be texting the whole time, what do you think would happen to you? And just kind of play that game with them. That way they can understand because there's, there's more to it than just, oh, well, I was late to physics class or, oh, I was late to math. It's not that big of a deal. And it's, well, I understand that it's now, but if you're continuing to be late now, what's, to, you know, what's not to say you're going to that job interview and you're five minutes late and you say, oh, but it's okay. It was only five minutes. You know, so there's more to life than just saying, oh, well, it was just a class or it was just this. So it's mainly making sure that we don't continue to practice bad habits. But yes, I definitely see some of myself and some students a hundred percent. Wow, that's that's so great. That's something I always wanted to ask teachers because I feel like sometimes teachers forget or just people that work in schools, like the ones that I've experienced, they forget what it's mm -hmm. like to be in the shoes of students. And sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like there's they lose that connection with their students so that's great to hear yeah. from you yeah no that i definitely see it and, and sometimes you sit back and you laugh and then other times you're like all right we need to have a conversation and figure this out <laughs> <laughs> definitely so you you mentioned a little bit about how you think and how you say that we shouldn't practice those bad habits so that leads into our next question what principles do you live your life by uh i like to live my life by being honest you know, I think whether you're right or wrong, um, if you're just honest about a situation, it will, it will see itself out, um, you know, because once you get caught in that web of a lie, it's really tough to get out of. Um, and by really tough to get out of, it's nearly impossible. And you're only kind of just digging deeper into that hole. Uh, so that's definitely one. I, I think kindness is another one. Um, you know, I don't really tolerate people judging people or people you know, saying things uh, about other people, because again, you don't understand what that person may be going through, um, especially for myself having, uh, you know, one of the things about me is my, I have an uncle who has Down syndrome, right? Um, you know, so making sure that people are kind to each other uh, and understanding of maybe people who may be in their eyes is what you would call different, right? Is another thing that I'm really big on because, um, you know, everybody should be kind to everybody. And, and there's nobody that should be, you know, going out and trying to go after people and things like that. So I think honesty and kindness are the two biggest ones that I like to strive to be. And just, you know, because I think if you can do those and you, you can continue to be the best version of yourself and be the best version of somebody that you strive to be. That's so true, especially when it comes to honesty, because I feel like once you make one lie, you have to cover it up with another lie. Then you have to cover exactly. up that lie with another lie. And you got to make sure you're yeah. telling everyone the same lie. And it's just like, you got to keep up with it. Then, it's so yeah. much stress. And then, and then, and then you got to rely on other people remembering your version of the lie. It's one big game of telephone. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, John, what would you say you are grateful for? 
Uh, I definitely say I'm grateful for the opportunity to work with kids. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely, again, I, I could sit here until I'm blue in the face and say it, you know, I, I consider the job that I have probably the, the luckiest job ever, you know, because I'm, I'm hopefully able to help kids in different situations and hopefully just trying to, to pass on, pass on and, and pass along um, advice that will be helpful. Right. So I'm definitely thankful to be at St. John's prep. Um, the people that I work with, there are absolutely amazing. They make every day going to work fun. You know, I leave school every day saying, okay, well, I can't wait to be back tomorrow. Right. Uh, just because those are the type of people that, that work there. And those are the type of, of kids that we have at, at the school. Uh, so I'd say definitely that for sure. So you said it's a job, but does it really feel like a job to you? Definitely doesn't. Definitely does not. A hundred percent. You know, the, the, what's the old saying? If you if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life, right? Yep. So that's that's truly what I feel. Um, I, that's truly what I feel about this. You know, I don't really feel like I'm going into work. I feel like I'm going into you know, do everything that I, I was destined to do. I guess you could say. That's awesome. You know, we need more people in schools that think like that, just like you. <laughs> yeah. uh, sounds good to me. Sign them up. <laughs> so now we're part of the show where we get our title from Time Capsule. So if you were to leave something in a time capsule for people to dig up 100 years later, what would you put in there and why? To describe myself in a way? Or if you were to leave something in a time capsule that describes yourself or that reflects the century, your life, anything, it's up to your own... So anybody that's been into my office uh, sees that I have a little bit of an Iona shrine in there. Um, so the one thing that I would probably leave in there uh, would be my first ever uh, TBT, which is the basketball tournament um, GM tag. Uh, I would definitely leave it there. And that to me is something that kind of en encapsulates a lot of the hard work I put in the basketball world. Um, you know, it's a team that I put together that comprises of former Iona alumni uh, that compete for $2 million during the summer on ESPN. And, you know, not only being the coach, but putting it together and, and knowing all the hard work that went into it that first year to build the brand. And now that it kind of pays off where, you know, it's a very well-known brand in that community in terms of the TBT community. So I, I definitely would probably put that because that to me is one of the most successful things that I've done uh, in terms of my life in basketball would definitely be that. So that would be what would go in my time capsule. Definitely. So John, is there anything else that you like to add or to tell our viewers? Uh, I would like to add that um, just go and follow your dreams. I know it sounds very cliche, um, you know, but if you follow your dreams and if you, you know, go out and, and, and kind of, if you're thinking, well, is it between money or is it between passion? Passion wins 10 out of 10 times. Um, money will always find its way into a place. If you chase your passion and you truly will have kind of served your life's purpose and you truly will have, um, you know, done something that, that, that can be looked at uh, as meaningful. Right. You could you could be, uh, you know, if you're trying to go for being remembered or something like that, then you definitely want to go after your passion. So I definitely would say go and chase and follow your dreams and, and, and attack it. For, uh, that that's would be my advice to the listeners. Got it. That's awesome. Couldn't have said it better. So, John, thanks so much for being a part of our time capsule. And thank you to our viewers for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. Tune in again next week to meet another amazing addition to our time capsule.